So here's your interview question. You are given locations of n cabs and you are standing at a location x. You have to find nearest cabs to you. Basically, you have to design and code Uber or Ola. Doesn't that seem like a very common question? In fact, not just that. You could be asked to implement how we can find the closest nearby delivery partners for a restaurant or literally anything nearby like hotels, hospitals, parlors, anything. Basically, implement Google Maps without using Google Maps. So if we are given a bunch of location coordinates and if you have to find all the nearby coordinates, how are you going to do it? I want you to pause over here and start thinking yourself. How would you implement this? Let's get started. Suppose this is the space that we have to consider and we are given a bunch of locations where our cabs are or where our delivery partners are standing. Now suppose these are those locations, some random locations. And now you're given a particular point at which you are standing or from which we have to implement our algorithm. And suppose this is the location and you have to find all the nearest cabs or nearest delivery partners. So how are you going to do that? The first obvious solution that comes to our mind is that we are going to find the distances of all the cabs of, or of all the delivery partners from this particular location and then we are going to see that which ones are the nearest and we are going to return that. Now let's imagine in a real scenario. In reality, how many cabs and delivery partners are going to be there and there are going to be thousands of requests coming in every second. So this is obviously not the most efficient solution because we're calculating distances from every single cab or every single delivery partner that we have on earth or in India or in a particular state or in a particular city. It is still not efficient. So how can we make this better? We have to design the data structure or come up with an algorithm such that from this particular location, we know the nearest cabs. So let's see how we can do that. First important point, in order to find the nearest cabs, firstly, we have to see where this location is in the space that we have, right? Because we are going to be given different, different locations in this space. And we need to find that, okay, where our exact location is and then find the cabs nearby, right? And how do we really search in a space? Suppose it was a 1D line. How do we search efficiently? Binary search. What do we do in binary search? We reduce our problems into sub problems. Imagine a line, if it was a 1D line, we could have divided into halves knowing that, okay, our location that we are considering is in left half or in right half and then we could keep dividing it and do binary search. That is exactly what we do in BSD. And it is a similar concept that we are going to transfer to a 2D plane. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to divide this into parts such that our search becomes more efficient and we know that okay we can divide our search problem into smaller sub problems so what we are going to do is this is our space i'm going to divide it into four parts just in binary search i divide into two parts here because it's a 2d plane i'm dividing into four parts now what i can do is i can recursively keep on dividing every square or every space into four four parts. Now I can keep dividing this, not just square, it can be rectangle or basically any space I'm dividing into four parts. I can keep dividing like that. Okay, so this is actually a tree structure. Now I know it can be very, very overwhelming. So just bear with me. This is actually called a quad tree. Now I understand your question. The obvious doubt is how is this even a tree? I understand your concern. Let's try to understand how a tree looks. So there's a node and there are children to it. And the children are basically of the type nodes, just that there is a left child and there's a right child to every node, right? And that is in a binary tree. There can be like many children in a tree if it's an n array tree, right? So similarly over here, what I need you to do is visualize this particular space, this particular quadrant as a node. And now what we did is we divided into four parts. So this is one child quadrant. This is another child quadrant. This is another child quadrant and this is another child quadrant. So basically there are four children of every node when we are dividing it. Like right now, this node has no children. And if I decide to divide it into four equal quadrants, what have I done? I have, I have created four children. So basically here each node is a quadrant and there are four quadrant children to it. And those are created when I divide a particular quadrant. Is this much clear? See if this is a particular quadrant, this is one child, this is one child, this is one child, this is one child. 
Now, if I take this quadrant and divide it into four parts, this is one side, this is one side, this is one side, and this is one side. So, every quadrant, four children, four quadrant children. Before moving ahead, let's quickly talk about how we are going to represent this structure in code. So, obviously, there are xy coordinates of all the four points of the structure. Now, I know that I am calling it xy, even though we are talking about geolocation coordinates. I know I should be calling it latitude longitude, but it can be a bit confusing for a few people because latitude is actually along x-axis and it is actually y value and longitude is through x-axis. So it's the x value and I know it can be a bit confusing for a few people because it will essentially become longitude comma latitude. And this is the last thing I want you to worry about when talking about quadris. So let's just call it x, y to make our life very simple. So in the code also, which I'll be showing you, by the way, we are going to call the coordinates as x, y. Now, one way to represent a rectangle is if we have the top left and the bottom right or say this, see these two coordinates or these two coordinates. Then we can obviously just calculate height and width and then obviously center is going to be like width ka half and then height ka half. That is one way to store the rectangle. Another way is that we store the center, which is like center ka x and center ka y. And then we store these two values, that is half width and half height. So the second way is what we are going to be using in our code because it, act, it actually makes things very simple because we can compare the locations with this center and we also know the half width and half height. So when we are dividing our quadrants, it just becomes very easier. So it is just one way to write code. The other way is obviously if you store these two coordinates or these two coordinates, if you start looking up online, there you're going to find codes of both the ways, obviously. So every node of quad tree is essentially a quadrant as we had talked about. So our root node is this particular quadrant. And when we divide it, it is going to get divided into four quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, four. So this is the north area. So this is the northwest quadrant. This is the northeast quadrant. This is the southwest quadrant. And this is the southeast quadrant. Because your location is stuck in northwest, southeast. Okay. Now, each of these quadrants basically have four children now, which are again of the type quadrant. Right. Now we can divide a particular quad children child into again four quadrants like this. So this will be again northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast for this parent quadrant. Again, this can be divided into four quadrants. It can be divided into four quadrants. It can be divided into four quadrants. Now, the next obvious question is, when do we stop dividing the quadrants? That honestly depends on the algorithm we want to implement. There are a bunch of parameters that we can consider and let's discuss them now. But I hope you have understood this much that we are taking our space, we are dividing it into four quadrants and we are basically making our search simpler. Okay, let's quickly talk about how we are making our search simpler over here so that you have some context about why are we really learning quadri. Suppose this is the location for which we have to find the nearby cabs or the nearby delivery partners. We see our center the, of the root quadrant and comparing with the x and the y values, we will know that our location is in northwest, northeast, southwest or southeast. So depending on the comparison, we can move to a smaller quadrant. We can recursively search into a smaller child or we can recursively move to a smaller quadrant to search for the location. And that is why our search is becoming actually log n. Why is that? Just like BST or binary search, what are we doing? We are dividing a problem into a smaller subproblem by comparing the location of this coordinate with the center. We know that we don't have to search these three quadrants at all. We have to search only this particular quadrant and I thus move my search to a smaller subproblem. Then again, I can compare, I can move my search into a smaller subproblem again to a smaller subproblem. And so whenever we have to find the nearby cabs or nearby delivery partners, it becomes very easy because we can first look within the parent quadrant and then move to the bigger parent quadrant and then move to bigger parent quadrant. We'll talk about that algo later, but I hope you have understood why we are using quadri and how we are dividing our problems into smaller subproblems, how we are making our search in log n 
This is essentially extension of binary search, just that binary search was in 1D and this is in 2D. So that is why there are four quadrants. So instead of dividing our search space into two parts, we are dividing our search space into four parts or four quadrants. And we are dividing our problem into smaller sub problems, just like binary search. Coming back to our question, when do we stop dividing our quadrants into smaller quadrants? When do we stop creating the child nodes? Or when do we really reach the leaf nodes? Like in a binary search tree, there are leaf nodes, right? What are leaf nodes in this particular quadrant? Now, there could be a bunch of parameters that we could consider. One possible easy solution in real life scenario is that we keep the smallest quadrant, the leaf node of the height and width as one kilometer. Now, that is the smallest sub quadrant that we can have. Now, that is one way to go about it. But what will be the problem that we will face if we decide to do that? Then what is going to happen is, suppose in metro cities like Bangalore and Mumbai, the one kilometer uh, area is going to be highly cluttered. Whereas in smaller cities, tier two, tier three, it could be empty. Like there might be like hardly one or two cabs or there might be no cabs in a, in a quadrant. Whereas in tier one, it might be highly, highly cluttered. So definitely our division is not uniform. So how do we make it uniform? Now, another way of stopping our division is that when there are particular number of cabs in a quadrant. Now, let's say that our smaller sub quadrant should have, say, C capacity. Suppose there are, if there are C cabs, then it is fine. But if there is one more cab in it, we divide our sub quadrant. So the maximum number of cabs that any sub quadrant can have is going to be C. So if there is literally no cab in a quadrant, say in this quadrant, there is no cab, we are not going to divide it. But if the cabs start coming in like one, two, three, four, and so on, as soon as the number of cabs is C, it's fine. But as soon as it becomes one more, C plus one, we are going to divide it. And we are going to make sure that no quadrant has cabs more than C. Now that is one way to go about it. There can be many, many ways to go about it. But in the demo that we are going to be seeing today, the code that I have written, I have taken the capacity as one. Now, what does that mean? That each quadrant will have one cap. They can be zero caps also, but if it has more than one cap, I'm going to divide it and I'm going to make sure that no quadrant has more than one cap. Now let's make the diagram again and let's see how insertion search, everything is going to happen. Taking the assumption, that our any quadrant can have maximum one cap in it. Now we are going to see that how the code is going to work. So it's going to get really interesting now. Before we move ahead, just one quick small thing. So there is absolutely no paid promotion in the entire video. And if you are here to study, you might understand the amount of effort that this video has taken. So if you want to appreciate that, I am not asking you for any money, not at all. I'm just asking you for one minute to just get one more person subscribed to the channel. You have no idea how much that will motivate me to create more educational content. And if you share it with your friends, you're not just helping me, you're helping your friends also learn more. You are pushing them to study more. You're pushing them to improve at their skills more. And if you have noticed, I have removed all the non-coding related stuff from my channel. So my vision is completely clear. I just want to create good educational content over here. I want to teach and that is all I want to do. And I just want your support. So if you appreciate all the work that I am doing, you have no idea how much it will mean to me if you just get one more person to subscribe or you share it with your friends. Thank you for that. Let's continue now. Now suppose this is our root quadrant. This is the first quadrant that we are going to consider, the biggest parent quadrant. And the coordinate over here is 0, 0 and the coordinates over here are 100, 100. I'm just taking this for demo purposes so that it is easy to understand. Now, obviously the center is what? It is 50, 50. The half width is going to be 50. The half height is going to be 50. So obviously it is easy to calculate the width is 100, the height is 100. Okay. Now say the first request that comes is that insert the first cap for this quadrant at location 60, 60. So at 60, 60, there is a cap now. So there is a cap standing over here. Now, the second request that comes in for this quadrant is that insert another cap over here, say at 2020. Now, as soon as that happens, what happened is that in this parent quadrant, in the root quadrant, now there are two caps. What did I say? We are assuming that the capacity of each quadrant is one cap. So as soon as there are two caps, now what do we have to do? We divide our quadrant into four parts. 
So now there are four children to the quadrant. There, there is northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Now there are four children. This 60-60 wala cap is in northeast quadrant. This 20-20 wala cap is in southwest quadrant. Now I don't know how many of you are thinking about this but you should be thinking about these things. That here we are just assuming that the cab is standing at a particular location, right? Obviously the cabs are going to keep moving. Does that mean that we are going to keep restructuring our quad tree? Now that is one way to go about it. Another way to go about it is instead of doing it throughout the day, we analyze the data through the, throughout the day and then we restructure our quad tree say at midnight or at any particular time according to usually what are the most cluttered areas and then we see that okay what was the maximum capacity for this area we are going to keep the capacity as that much now that is one way to go about it but right now what we are doing is we are restructuring our quad tree with every insertion every removal and we are searching accordingly so right now our first request that came is that insert a cab at 60 60 so quadrant was fine because there was only one cab as soon as the other request came there were two cabs now there are two cabs and my capacity is just one cab i'm going to have only one cab in a quadrant so i divided my quadrant into four parts now there are four children and the one cab is in southwest quadrant and one cab is in northeast quadrant now suppose there is another request that comes that insert a cab say at 8080 so there is another cab at 8080 now so again in this quadrant there are two caps so what am i going to do i am going to divide this so now this cap is in this quadrant this cap is in this quadrant now i hope you have understood now say there was another cap at 1990 i would have divided this again so that is how insertion is happening we are dividing our quadrants only when the number of caps in any quadrant becomes more than the capacity which is in our case one cap we are obviously going to see the entire code, but right now to make the understanding process easier, let's quickly see how our class quadrant is going to look so that you have a clearer idea. And when I explain the rest of the things, you will be able to understand more better. So I'm going to write a class and I'm going to call it quadrant. So this is a quad. So this is a node of the quad tree. So what are the things that are going to be there in each node? Firstly, we have to store the center value. So there's going to be a location, uh, say a reference to it. So center then obviously we have to store half width and half height values so double i'm just going to call it half width and double half height so these three things are enough to you know identify which quadrant are we talking about then we have references to the four children so obviously we are going to have what quad so reference to the northwest child so i'm just going to write it in w and then similarly to the northeast child, similarly to the southwest child, and similarly to the southeast child. So there are four references over here to the children. Now each quadrant I know is going to have only one cap, that is the capacity that we are considering. So I am going to have the data of a particular cap. Now see here. In the demo that we are talking about, we are taking the capacity as 1 and that is why there is 1 cap. Otherwise, there could be like an integer value that, okay, what is the capacity that we are considering? It would be an integer capacity and then there would be a vector or like a list of caps of the size capacity, right? But right now, to keep it very simple, I am going to have only one cap and just to keep the location of the cap also, I am probably going to have cap the location. So if we see other examples, like if we are talking about delivery partners and stuff, the data is going to obviously vary. Basically, in each quadrant, what are the values that we are going to store? What is the data that we are storing? Before moving ahead, I want you to notice a few things about the different quadrants in the diagram that we have considered. If you see this particular quadrant, the biggest quadrant, it is divided into four parts, right? So there are four children to it. So all these values are going to be pointing to something. The, north, the northwest child is basically pointing to this quadrant. This is pointing to this quadrant. You know that, right? Similarly, this quadrant is also going to have four children, right? The non-null values. But if we see this quadrant, there are going to be no children. So all the four values over here are going to be null, right? So, and there's going to be no cap. There's no cap location, right? So there is... So we have seen two types of quadrants till now. One 
type is which is divided. So let's say I call it as quad status. So what is a particular quadrant's status at a particular time? What are the possible statuses? One is divided. Okay, so this quadrant is divided. This quadrant is divided. Now if we say this quadrant, it is not divided. So since this is not divided, it doesn't have any children. By definition of leaf node, it is essentially a leaf node. Right? So a quad status can also be leaf node. So this is another status of quadrant and if you are actually thinking while watching the video then you should be asking this question already that what about these quadrants, this quadrant, this quadrant and this quadrant. So these also have a cap but these are not divided. So do we call them as leaf or do we not call them as leaf? Now see as soon as I insert another cap over here I am going to divide it right. But right now it is not divided. Since it is not divided right now, I am also going to call these quadrants as leaf. But what am I going to call them? I am going to call them as filled leaf. So instead of just leaf, I am adding two statuses. One is filled leaf and one is empty leaf. So let's quickly see what have, I, what have we done till now. We are seeing different statuses in which our quadrant can be depending on the insertion. One is divided. So our bigger parent or basically a bigger parent is divided into children. So all the four values here are non-null. They are pointing to the smaller subquadrants. But they are also leaf nodes. So basically this is also a leaf node and this is also a leaf node. Both of them are leaf nodes. But here we can insert one more cap. So it is essentially different than this quadrant where if one more cap comes, we are going to divide it. So one status is filled leaf, one status is empty leaf. Suppose our capacity was not one and it was a C capacity, then they could also be partially filled leaf or partially filled quadrant essentially. So this is not something that I think you will find somewhere, but while writing code, I found this very, very easy to understand. So I pictured quad tree like this, and that is why I'm saying this. Uh, when we do insertion and search, it's going to be very, very simple because depending on the status of each quadrant, we can divide that, you know, what is going to happen in the insertion or in the search. So it makes our life very, very easy if we understand what is the status of each quadrant. Now let's see how the insertion is going to happen based on the quadrant statuses. And then we are going to start looking at the code. We are going to see how insertion is happening and then we will start discussing how searches will happen. So here in our case, partially filled is not going to be required. We are going to have three statuses, divided, fill leaf and empty leaf. And in our class quadrant, we are going to store the quad status as well. So this is another member that we are going to store. Now the first quadrant that we would have created is the root quadrant. Now in this root quadrant, the what is going to be the status? Empty leaf. So whenever we are going to create a new quadrant, it is going to be an empty leaf because there are no children in it, there is no cap in it. So it is not divided, it is not fed, right? As soon as there is going to be a cap placed in it, the status of this quadrant changes to what? It is going to change to filled leaf. So when empty leaf changes to filled leaf, what is going to happen? There is a cap, there is a cap's location, we are going to update cap, we are going to update cap's location. Okay, everything good. Now we have a filled leaf. Now, as soon as I enter another cap over here, what is going to happen? We will have to divide this quadrant into four parts. And now the status of this parent quadrant becomes divided. Now, as soon as it becomes divided, we have to create four children, which will be these four quadrants. Okay. And now when we have these four quadrants, this particular quadrant is going to become a filled leaf. Why is it becoming a filled leaf? Because Obviously, if there is one more cap, it is also going to be divided and there is a cap, so it can't be empty leaf. It is a filled leaf. Now, this is also a filled leaf, right? So, as soon as we do the division, we have to update the statuses of the children quadrants as well, right? Now, as soon as, so if there is a filled leaf, now if there is another cap in this, again, we will have to divide it, update the statuses accordingly. 
right now if this is an empty leaf if we add another cap it is going to become what it is going to become a filled leaf now if i add another cap what is going to happen it is going to get updated to divided and we will have to update the status of this quadrant and this quadrant as filled leaf while this quadrant and this quadrant is going to be empty leaf so there are three quadrant statuses and we are going to use this to do our insertion before we start looking into the code, there is just one more thing that I want to talk about which is present in the code and that's why it will be easy to understand only it is nothing hard. Right now what we have divided is every quadrant we are dividing into children, right? So every parent has references of the children. Right now we are going to go deeper into the quadrants like from the parent quadrant we are going to go to into the child then only into the child then only into the child. But when we are obviously going to do search, what is going to happen is if we are at this location and this is suppose divided like this, like this. So if we are going to search and if there are no enough caps in this, we will have to like move out from this quadrant to the bigger parent of it, to the bigger parent of it, to the bigger parent of it. That is how roughly search is going to happen, right? So in order to do that, we will have to move from the child node to the parent node. So in the code, you will also see reference to the parent node. We are not going to focus on it so much. We are going to focus on it while we discuss search. But right now in insertion, you will see a parent. So don't get confused. You will see a bunch of other things also. That is all for search. So do not get confused. Let's look at the code. So this is the code that I have written. This is nowhere close to perfect code. It needs a lot of refactoring, but I've written it for demo purposes. I have put in a lot of effort. So I am sure you'll be able to understand. Just, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you stay with me and let's see. So this is the quadrant class that we were talking about. And as you can see, this is the center location. This is the half width. This is the half height. And now this is the status. Now status is an enum, which I've written in common. And these are the possible statuses. Empty leaf, partially filled leaf, filled leaf, and divided node. As I said, partially leaf is partially filled leaf is not applicable for the single cap demo that we are talking about. And this is not going to be used anywhere. But yeah, just to understand, it is good to know. And there is going to be a single cap, so there is going to be a pointer to only one cap. There is the cap's location. And then there are pointers to all the children. And there is also an ID that I am generating, static ID. This is just for reference to a particular code that I am going to be using during search. Now this is the constructor that I have written. I have just passed the values. As you can see, I am generating the quad, the quad ID. Now this is static value that I have put. And then I'm updating the status. Status is going to be empty whenever we are creating a new node. So the it is empty and all the children are null. The cab is null and there is no location as well. So there is no cab and there are no children. It is an empty leaf when we are creating a new node altogether. Now let's look at the functions that are there. So there are a bunch of functions that I have written. This is the main one that we are going to be looking at now. Insert. So let's look at it. So this is the CPB file. So in the insert function, we are given a cap. So basically the function says that insert a cap at this location. Okay. So I have taken a bunch of cases and we are going to look at each case one by one. The first case is of course, if there is no cap just written, so nothing to be done over there. I can put an output statement or return an error code. Obviously I'm returning nothing right now. I'm just outputting. Otherwise, uh, I would have like error code returning or like a code that says that okay whether the insertion was successful or not. Then the next case that I have considered is whether the location is within the boundary of the quadrant. So we are inserting in a particular quadrant. It is possible that the location that is sent to us is outside the boundary of the quadrant that is sent to us. So I have written a function contains lock and let's see what this function does. It just compares the x and the y values with the center and it just you know center ka x minus half width, center ka x plus half width, center y minus. So just making sure that it is within the boundary. Now I'm not sure if you thought of this edge case or not, but you should have thought of it. That what if you know uh, the cab or the location lies on the boundary itself. While we are dividing any quadrant, what if it exists on the boundary itself? So to just handle that edge case, what I've done is the top and the left I'm considering as equal conditions and the bottom and the right I'm not considering as equal conditions. This is just to handle the edge case and I've done that everywhere. So that is one way to handle it. There's obviously many, many ways to handle it. Now we finally come to the insertion part. Now here you can see that I, I'm inserting based on the statuses. So whatever the quadrant status is, according to that, I'm doing the insertion. 
So what are the three statuses? That first one is empty leaf, filled leaf and then divided node. So what if the quadrant is empty? That means that there was no cap. So whatever cap was passed, I just assigned that to the cap pointer in the quadrant and also I updated the location and I changed the status to fill leaf. So it was empty, I have put a cap, now it is fill leaf and I have this output. So when we run it, it will be very clear to you. So what am I doing? If it is empty, if I am putting a cap, I am just changing the status to fill and I am updating the cap's location and the cap itself. Now let's see what happens whether when it is divided. Now I have written a bunch of output statements to keep it very clear when we actually uh, run it. But it is just a lot of C out, so don't worry about it so much. Now when the quadrant is already divided, what do we have to do? We have to recursively do the insertion because it is already divided, right? Now there are four quadrants. Since the quadrant is already divided, we have to recursively insert the cap in one of the four quadrants, either northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast, like that. So we have to see that the location is in which of the children or in which of the subcoordinates. So all I have done over here is compare the x and the y values and depending on that I have recursively called the function again and I have just passed for the new child that in this child now insert the cap in this location. Now I know that the location is within the boundary of this child and that is why I have called that. So if the location is in the northwest child ka boundary, I am inserting into that. If it is in the northeast child ka boundary, I am inserting into that and similarly. Now this is the most interesting case when the leaf is already filled. That means there is already one cap. First case that we consider that there is no cap. So when we put a cap, it changes to fill leaf. The other case that we consider it is already divided. We just have to move recursively to smaller subproblems. Here we are saying that it is fill leaf. Now there is one cap already there in the quadrant. Now when there is one more cap that comes, what we have to do? We have to divide it again. So here what I have done is, first I have updated the status that now from fill leaf you are going to be a divided node. Then I have created children. What is happening in create children? You can see what am I doing? I am just dividing the quadrant. I am creating new uh, quadrants over here. Northwest child, northeast child, southwest child, southeast child. And what am I passing? I am passing the new center location how? Center ka x minus half width ka 2. So that is how I am finding the new center. And what are the new half width and half height values? It is just by 2 by 2. Okay. And I am also updating the parent. So parent is going to be this quadrant that I am considering. Because I am creating a child, right? So what is the parent? It is this. So this is what I am doing. I am creating a children over here. Now what am I going to do is, so there was already a cap over here. There is another cap that comes. Okay. I have divided this. And I have made sure that these are in separate quadrants. But there is also a case when even after division what happens is these two end up in the same quadrant itself. So what I have to do is I have to keep dividing until I am sure that they are in different quadrants. So let me explain that again with an example. Suppose there was one cap. Now one more cap came over here and I divided this. Okay. Now because there are still two caps what am I going to do? I am going to divide this again. Still there are two caps I am going to divide it again. Until I make sure that both the caps are in different quadrant, I will have to keep dividing. So here in this while loop, what am I doing is, I am dividing the quadrant again and again till I am sure that the cap, the previous cap that was there and the new cap that I am going to insert are going to be in different quadrants. Till then I am going to keep dividing, dividing, dividing because I have to make sure that the that any quadrant has maximum one cap because that is our capacity. Okay, so what have I done over here? I am locating in which quadrant, in which subquadrant my cap was there, and in which subquadrant my new cap is going to be there. So I have written a different function for that, which is called locate subquad. So what is this doing is that when I see over here, it is just seeing that whether it is in northwest, northeast, southwest, or southeast. So it is just doing that. So I have located that where my uh, previous cap was, where my new cap is, and while it is in the same quadrant. What am I doing? I am again and again dividing it. So I have considered two quadrants at all the places. One is the quadrant in which new cab is going to be there and one quadrant where my previous cab is going to be there. So this while loop is just doing that. And then I am checking that okay my new cab is going to be in which quadrant, my previous cab is going to be in which quadrant and I am inserting again recursively. So in the parent quad and in the uh, smallest quad considered I am putting it. So see. Once I divide also, my both caps are going to go in the new children, right? In the new child caps. So in both the cases, I have to insert them. 
right? I have to insert both the caps. So I am inserting both the caps over here, right? And I am inserting where I am inserting in the smallest quadrant that is there for both the caps. Let's quickly see what we have done till now. So while insertion, I am checking the status of the quadrants. If it is empty, I am changing it to filled and I am just updating the cap and the cap location. And over here, if it is filled, then I have to start the division process. I have to make sure that both the caps are in different quadrants. So I'm going to keep dividing, dividing, dividing till I'm sure that they are in different quadrants. Then over here, if it is divided, then I'm just going to recursively go and go to the child and then go like, you know what, insert in the child. And that's it. Now let's actually run the code and see. See guys, I don't think you would be expected to write the entire code in any interview. But in the interview, you will be expected to see the thought process. Are you able to think of the edge cases? Are you able to think that if this is the status, this is what we would have to do. If this is the status, this is what we have to do. If we can even roughly tell that these are the steps that we would have to do. And if it's okay, if you are not able to come up, if you are not able to write code for all the cases, maybe if you were able to write for empty leaf and divided note, it would have been enough because your interviewer would know that you are going in the right direction. You can't do everything in 45 minutes. So the point of this video is to not make you feel overwhelmed that how are you going to do this in a 45 minutes interview. The point of the video is to really think about it and that how is it going to work. And if someone asks you not just this question, any question, you are able to think of the thought process. Let's run our code. So this is my main here. I have just created a parent quad and we are going to make the diagram and let's see that how the entire insertion is happening. So let's check it out. So let's run. This is the output. Now let's see what are we doing exactly. So here we can see that our parent quad was what? Our parent quad has the center 100, 100. So it is 100, 100 over here. And half width and half height are 100, 100. So that means that this is 0, 0 and this is 200, 200. Okay. First what I did, I created a cap, Kirti's cap and I'm trying to insert it at 250, 250. Now we know that it is out of bound of this because what is our maximum location? It is still 200, 200. So I, so you remember we put the check. So I am saying that the location 250, 250 at which you are trying to insert the cap is out of the quadrant. So edge case 100. Now next thing I am trying to insert this cap at 120, 120. So what are we going to do over here? We are going to take a cap and we are going to insert at 120, 120. So inserting cab at 120, 20, 120 in quad with center 100, 100, half at the half height 100, 100. Now I have created a Gaurav sense cab. Yes, all, all of us are going to be driving cabs today. So Gaurav is at 80, 80. So I come over here and I put Gaurav's cab at 80, 80. Now see, because there are two cabs in the same quadrant, I have done what? Dividing the quadrant with center this, this, this. Previous cap was in the subcontinent northeast. Where was previous cap? It was in northeast, right? And the new cap to be inserted is in subcord what? Southwest. So what are we going to do? We are going to divide this. The previous cap was in northeast. The new cap is in southwest, right? And inserting cap at 80, 80 in quadrant with center 50, 50. So this is the quadrant with center 50, 50. Half height, half width, half height are 50, 50. So we are talking about this quadrant. So in this quadrant, I have inserted this cap. And similarly, I am inserting 120, 120 where I am inserting it at the, in this quadrant, basically with center 150, 150 and half width, half height are what? 50, 50. So this is the half width, half height. So it is 50, 50. Okay. Now Yogita comes. Yogita is inserting the cap at 150, 150 over here. So now recursively I'm going to insert because I have taken the condition of uh, equal to. So what am I going to do? I'm going to insert the cab over here. So recursively inserting in the northeast of the quadrant. So here firstly I start from the biggest quadrant and then from here I go into the smaller northeast wala quadrant. Now from northeast what do I do? I divide the 150, 150 because there are two cabs now. So I'm dividing it and what am I saying? The previous cap was in the quadrant southwest. So this is where the previous cap was. And new cap is in southeast. Because all my else conditions and my equal to conditions was in south southeast. So Yogeta is considered in southeast. So they are essentially in two different uh, quadrants now. Previous cap was over here and the new cap is in the southeast. So southwest and southeast. 
and you can see that we are inserting the caps so, so 150 150 is in the quadrant with center 175 125 and the 120 121 is in the one with center 125 125 now again i am inserting striver at 2020 which is over here so it is 2020 so again now there are two caps so i am going to be dividing this you can see the previous cap was in northeast which was this and the new cap is in southwest so which is over here then again i am inserting 2020 in this sub quadrant and 8080 in the sub quadrant so you can see that the insertion works like a charm and I hope you like the code. Were you a little mind blown? Let me know in the comments because I was very proud of doing this. Now let's get to the search part which is actually the hardest part of this video. Coming to the search part. It is extremely extremely tricky to search the nearest cabs in a 2D plane. And why is this so tricky? Let's look at it. Now this is a huge quadrant that I have taken. I have divided into four parts as you can see the blue line. Then I have again divided into four parts, divided into four parts, divided into four parts, divided into four parts. Then again subdivision, subdivision, subdivision. So I have created like very small uh, parts. Now suppose given any location, suppose I am in this quadrant, I have to find all the nearest caps. Now suppose I can be asked to find 10 caps, 20 caps, 5 caps, it can be right? Like, but from here, I have to travel to the nearby quadrants and see that, okay, what are the nearest caps and return that. Now from here, how do I travel to the bigger quadrants? I had talked about the concept of parent, but that is not really necessary. That is just how I've written the coded demo to make it very simple. But what actually people do to make the algorithms very, very efficient is number each of these sub quadrants and then go like, if you're in this quadrant, then you remember I had had a quadrant ID. So depending on this quadrant ID, just move to the, you know, plus 6 quadrant IDs or minus 6 quadrant IDs, plus 10 quadrant IDs, minus 10 quadrant IDs, like that. Let me just quickly explain the problem again. The problem over here is that I could be at any location in this huge quadrant. Now I have to travel to the nearby quadrants. How am I going to do that? So I am saying that one way is to number all these sub quadrants and then sort of what you're doing is dividing your 2D problem into a 1D problem. Because then you have numbered all the sub quadrants, right? So based on the IDs, you can go like if the ID is plus 6, minus 6, plus 10, minus 10, just go accordingly. Now, there are different ways of numbering these sub quadrants also. So basically what they are trying to do is divide the 2D problem into a 1D problem. So how we can travel across this quadrant? So there are multiple ways to do it. The way we travel, the, the curves have like specific names, but I don't want to make it too complex. I want it to be very, very simple to understand. So I'm just telling you how we can travel across the quadrants. If you're confused right now, it is fine. This is just good to know information. The search that I have implemented doesn't actually include these curves. So it should be fairly easy to understand, but this is really good to know information. So, you know, stay with me. So one way of numbering these sub quadrants is that you start from here, you number this one then 2, then 3, then 4. Now I've made a Z over here. What am I going to do is, I'm going to create all the Zs. And then I'm just going to link them like this. Then after this, move over here. Another way to go about this is, make U shapes. So what am I going to do from here? I'm going to go like this. Or a better way would be that instead of this, I make this. So what am I doing essentially is, that I'm going to go like this, then come down, then instead of this I can have this then I'm going to go like this so there are different curves like this so basically a curve can be like this like this like this like this it can be like this so this is just to number that how we are going to travel from one sub quadrant to the other sub quadrant so basically we are going to number like this one two three four or we are going to number like this one two three four or we are going to number like okay so one two three four then five six seven eight then 9, 10, 11, 12, we are just going to number like this and now suppose we are in the quadrant 6 and we go like ki, give us the nearest caps. So what am I going to do? I am going to say that go to all the quadrants that are numbered say 6 plus 10 or 6 minus 10 and then see if there are caps over there just return them and add them to the list that I have to return. Easy to understand? So basically all we are doing is we are numbering the quadrants so that we know that how do we move from one sub quadrant to the other sub quadrant. That is, it. that is all that we are doing. But there is a huge issue when it comes to search. Now that will be very interesting to think of. And I wanted to pause and think about it yourself. 
And you know, if I go like this, and if I start searching like some quadrants nearby, and you know, if I search this, 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 or this, this, like, you know, I search nearby quadrants, what is the problem that I'm going to have? Now, suppose this is the coordinate that is given to us. This is the location. We have to find the nearby caps. So basically, there are some bunch of caps. We are not making the caps at all. We are just seeing that how we are going to visit the quadrants. Now, this is the child quadrant of this quadrant, right? So this is the immediate parent. So first thing that I will do is I will check in its sibling nodes, right? So I will check whether there is a cap over here, there is a cap over here. Then I will come over here. Then I will check for this parent, right? And then I will move to this particular parent. But the problem over here is, it is possible there was a cap over here, over here and over here. But because the cap is over here, like we are at this location, this cap is actually going to be much closer than this cap. Do you understand the problem? See, we are considering from this location, although the, you know, the lowest ancestor basically is for this cap, but this cap is actually closer. You take any curve, any curve that we talked about, Z curve, alpha curve, or you know, the U curves that we saw, all of these curves that we take, what actually is happening is that we might not be considering the closest cab at all. We might be, we are just considering the cabs that are there in the immediate subquadrants, like in the sibling subquadrants and in the parent subquadrants. So that's a huge problem over here. So based on my understanding, there's sort of a trade-off over here. And in reality, in real cases, this is a trade-off that we are willing to take because of the optimization that is happening, because we are able to do insertion and search and log in. We are dividing our search space into four, four parts, not just two, two parts. So we are really improving our insertion and search. It might not always return the closest cap, but that is fine. Based on the fact that it is improving so much, this is a really good algo to have. So let's look at the search code that I have written for demo. It does not use the curves that we talked about. I have used the normal parent pointer that I talked about earlier. I have just used a visited vector for each quadrant that marks that okay whether this quadrant has been visited or not and if it is visited then I don't need to you know recursively check again for its parent or its children. So let's look at the code and this is going to be the last part of the video. If you have stayed till here that means you have liked the content and thank you so much for doing that but you could really really support educators like me by just sharing the video with your friends, by just subscribing. You have no idea how much it will mean to me. I have put in so much effort recording this, writing the entire code, coming up with examples from which I can explain. I have put in a lot of effort into this. And if you appreciate that, the best way to convey your support would be to subscribe, to share it with your friends, to share it across social media, to encourage more people to watch educational content so that we are motivated to create good educational content like this. And let's look at the code now. So this is the code in the main where I am checking the nearby caps for the location 3030. Let's first run and see whether this works or not. So nearby caps is the location 3030 are Kirti, Gaurav and Striver. So let's see where Kirti, Gaurav and Striver were. So Kirti was at 120, 120 Gaurav was at 8080 and Striver was at 2020. Now Yogita is really far 150, 150. So that is why she was not in the result. Now in the common, I had written the number of caps that I should return when I am searching for nearby caps. If I make it to 4, I should also get Yogita. Now let's run and see whether this is true or not. So yes, so I am also getting Yogita over here. Now let's see the problem that is going to happen. So suppose I am searching for only one cap. So I want a really, really uh, correct answer right now. So in this case, uh, what is the answer that I am getting? I am getting answer is Gaurav. So let's see where was Gaurav. So near 3030, I've get, gotten the answer is Gaurav, which was at 8080. But if we see, there was also Striver at 2020, which was actually nearer to 3030. So this answer is not correct. Firstly, this is demo code. So we have not implemented any high algo. So this is very, very basic code. So And it's never going to be one cap. It's going to be multiple caps. And we, the capacity is also going to be more than one. So it is highly probable that within the quadrant itself, we'll be able to return like five, 10 caps. So it is fine if you are not able to tell one cap, which is there in like parent ka parent quadrant, because in real life scenario, what is going to happen is that within one quadrant or within the sibling quadrant itself, you'll be able to find the closest caps. 
so personally i don't think this is something to worry about a lot but i'm sure some of you will disagree but i guess that's fine so let's look at the function so uh, i am returning a set of cabs i made a set of cabs so that i make sure that i am not inserting the same cab again and again just to make things easier for me then i'm returning the nearby cabs for this particular location i've created a new set and my lowest quadrant that i'm considering first of all i'm starting from root so this is this then sub quadrant i have not assigned it initially then i've created a map for visited so in teacher is the quadrant id that it is basically a static identifier that i am assigning to every quadrant as i'm creating new quadrants so basically for every quadrant i am maintaining that okay is it visited or not and then i am checking that if it is not leaf basically it is not empty leaf or if it is filled leaf then i am going to locate the sub quad where it is present so basically i am going to go down i am going to drill down to the smallest sub quad which i have to consider so i am starting from the root i am going to the sub quad sub quad sub quad so this is what i do i go to the lowest sub quad and then for that i get cabs from the parent so let's go to this function and see what it is doing in this function i am basically first of all checking if the number of cabs is already there i am going to returning because i am going to call this recursively then i am going to check for each of the children i am getting the parent quad so i am storing the parent in each quadrant and then for each of the parent i am checking uh, for all the children northwest northeast southwest southeast that if it is divided then get the cabs from the children otherwise if it is not divided that means i have to check that if there is one cab so it is either empty leaf or it is filled leaf so in that case there can be one cap so if there is one cap i am getting it and i am making sure that always the caps ka size is less than number of caps that we have assigned and what am i doing in this get caps from children so basically i am checking that from this quadrant for all the children quadrant because it is possible that i am going up in the parent but i have to check for the siblings also so for the parent i have to check the rest of the children so i am getting caps from the rest of the children so these are basically utility functions in short what am i doing i am going to the parent i am making sure that whatever children are there in the siblings in the parent i am adding all of the caps and that is how i have done if you are having any trouble understanding that why do we need visited map just think like this so currently i am at say this child this particular child and then i go to parent okay so i also need to get caps from the sibling quadrants so again from this parent i am going to go back to the children so what might happen is that i might go back to the same quadrant again so but this is visited so i am not going to go to that again this is going to keep on happening because if i go to this again i am going to come to the children again i am going to the go to the parent then children then parent then children so i just have to make sure i am not visiting the same quadrant again and again right so that's what i have done over here i have just used an unordered map and uh, marked quadrants as visited i really hope you found the video interesting because it was a very different topic for me and i thoroughly enjoyed prepping for it and creating the video and if you want me to cover any such topics or any such lld questions basically just let me know i would love to create content and i would love to explain more and obviously i have uploaded the code in github so you can check out the link and again please do subscribe and you have no idea how much it would mean to me if you stay till the end then please please do subscribe please do share with your friends it is going to mean the world to me see you next time